Oh shit, here we go again. Hey everybody, it's Sassy Assassin here, back with another Amberlynn Reed reaction video. So before we begin, I just want to remind everyone that this video is under the Fair Use Act. This, is, this video is not meant for children. This video is not meant to bully harass anyone, including Amber, since she is the subject of today's video. Keep in mind that I'm a big person and I'm entitled to have an opinion about another big person. Also keep in mind that my criticisms about Amber in this case is not about her weight. It's about her conduct on her platform, how she treats her audience, how she lies, manipulates, and gaslights her audience, and how she clickbaits and monetizes off of critical health issues. If I talk about things that I need for my channel, that I want for my channel, what I'm doing for my channel, I'm not begging for money. I do accept donations, but I'm not asking for it. Like, share, subscribe, comment below, hit the notification bell if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about this video or any of the videos I've made so far on my platform. Please feel free to leave a comment below or hit me up on any of my social media accounts. Thank you. And let's get into this video. Hey guys, so, oh my god, it's been a fucking crazy day. Anyways, so, I hope you guys are all well, happy, healthy, and safe, and, um, enjoying this lovely, if you're in my area, or if it's really hot where you are, I hope you're enjoying it, because I'm telling you, it's been so muggy, and so hot, and just so... Oh, it's just like, can't use the pool because it's not working. Can't go to the lake because I don't have any enough gas money to go. So it's like, uh, <laughs> I hate it. Anyways, um, we're all in the same boat, right? Coronavirus. But if I had money to go to the lake, I would go. Like, because at this point, I just want to jump in, like, a jump, jump in a lake and just, like, cool myself off. Because not even, I mean, the closest thing I have is my shower. <laughs> But anyways, um, let's get into this video. I'm, I'm rambling at this point. Like, I was out a lot in the heat today, so I'm just like, <clears throat> So, I, she's home now, and I just want to say this before I begin. I am so confused about the timeline at this point. I really wish she would just, sorry, I really wish she would just put timestamps on, like the time and day. And everything because it's getting so confusing but I think she's doing it purposely just to confuse people because it causes more drama it brings more views aka you know more money so she's still a shitty per person in that regard you know it's just ridiculous but anyways I'm not hating on the shirt though I think it's kind of pretty I, the color is nice on her but that, yeah whatever all right Hey guys, so another update. It is actually the next day. So I did end up coming home yesterday. Sorry. And it has been pretty challenging because I'm no longer under like the care of tons of doctors and nurses, which made me feel safe. And um, I have so much medicine that I have to take and I have alarm set so I don't forget. And I have to do two shots a day in my stomach. It's to prevent blood clots. That's terrifying. Oh my god, get over it, girl. <laughs> if you keep on going down this road, okay, with your health, get used to needles, honey, because that's that's your life. See, for me, I know I, mean, I know people have phobia, so I'm not hating on them. But for me, personally, and this is like I said, not hating on anybody, anybody, I don't have a problem with needles anymore. I used to. I used to be deathly afraid of needles. <laughs> um, I would pass out. But then it got to a point where I was having to have blood work and tests and all this stuff all the time. IVs. I just, I got over it so quickly. And now it doesn't even bother me. Even when it really hurts. It, I just like, just get done over with. But, um, yeah. My dad has to leave. When my dad used to take me, because I don't drive, um, he, uh, used to have to leave the room before, you know, COVID, whatever, because he couldn't see the, <laughs> he didn't want to see the needle going into the skin. <laughs> but anyway, sorry. A little story there. God, I had way too much to drink tonight. Um, it, it sucks. 
but you know i'm doing everything that they tell me that i need to do and i've had those bully shots too in the hospital and i didn't know you could have them at home but they suck i hate them they actually hurt worse than anything but like it's you know i i always think and you know it's benefiting me in some way so you just gotta grit through it so sleeping was crazy yeah it is i I just couldn't get comfortable at all um Mm -hmm. long story short i'm definitely gonna have to use a recliner um we don't get our new bed until next week sometime so how is becky sleeping and i'm hoping i can get on it and be comfortable on it i guess we'll see everything hurts everything you know it's to be expected it doesn't hurt as much as i thought it was going to i think the biggest thing that i'm worried about is i have positional headaches is kind of what it's called um anytime i sit up or stand up my head hurts my hearing changes my neck hurts i get really dizzy and nauseous and that's not good it could be due to a spinal leak which i did have a um what is it called the thing that they put in your spine epidural Epidural. i forgot what it was called from that oh shit i'm hoping that's all a coincidence so okay now it's been it was debated in my comment section in the last video so she's talking keeps on talking about having an epidural so was she awake the whole time okay sorry i have something on my screen and it was bugging me was she awake the whole time during the surgery and did they do an epidural because they didn't want her to be asleep because that would make sense to me if if you know when it's in a situation like this where you have a patient and see, I'm not a medical professional, but I'm thinking more on the logic. I'm logically here. When you have a patient who is massively overweight and is seen to be a person that is, in my eyes, if I was a medical professional, I wouldn't see Amberlyn Reed as a person who was motivated to lose weight and who would lose weight fast anytime soon. And. Amber can argue this as much as she wants to and says, oh, I'm motivated. Girl, the way you've been eating, I mean, you still have a really bad mindset when it comes to food. Like, your last Whole Foods haul even smoked that. Like, I, I, a lot of snacks, a lot of processed trigger foods. Um, I would, you would, I think that the, what was going on is that their mind, in their mind, and like I said, guessing, um, that I thought, well, in some way we gotta get, we gotta get this patient a hysterectomy. And their pro- worries were, well, sedating her would be maybe for them too much of a gamble for her life. In order to save her, the only thing that they, well, why don't we just do an epidural, you know, hit her up with a heavy, I don't know, I've never had an epidural, I, I don't know, I think my mom had one or one or two times, um, and get her organs out out that way so um because let's face it she couldn't do all i mean the thing i think here's the thing i've been thinking about it a lot because i'm I'm not a lot lot but you know just occasionally um you know when i'm editing you know not really editing but you know um yeah, editing. I do some editing, but when I'm editing these videos, I don't do a lot, but I do do some editing. When I'm editing these videos, I just, I can't help but think that the, this her situation is different from probably the norm because one, you got COVID, and then two, you have her weight is a very big factor, and 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 I think you know when you look at a person's health, it's by case by case basis, and it's like. I have to keep on remembering that her situation is different because of her size. They couldn't do all the tests that they wanted to do because of the fact that she couldn't fit in the tests. And um, so their only option, I feel like, was just to give her the epidural, epidural, do the surgery that way, and take everything out to save her life. I don't think they had, and because you know she talked about getting a. Uh, uh, I think I think it was like a hormone treatment or something. Um, I don't know, some sort of form of like pills, whatever. And I I think at some point they realized it's too late for that. And or maybe it wasn't. Maybe that she could. I think if she wasn't so big, she could have done it. But I think also 
because of her size that they thought, you know what, we, just to save ourselves the trouble because she's so inaccessible to, mach you know, to certain tests that she needs to have done and we would need to have done during the treatments that, uh, just let's take everything out. And so that, you know, that's where I, I'm just clearing that up because that is my mind frame. And that's why I, that's why probably to a lot of us who, and I haven't had them, but for people who have had it, it's different because you have to keep in mind of one, the pandemic to her health, her weight and the state of her health. You know, they have, it's a case by case basis and they had to act accordingly. And I'm not, you know, I still question a lot of things. I just, I want you guys to take that into account. You believe me or agree with me or whatever are not fine. I just wanted to put that out there, but all right. Continuing on. Uh, the reason why I do feel that way when I sit up is just purely because for four days straight I was sleeping and my head was like, you know, we'll see. Wait, wait a minute. Didn't you just say you weren't sleeping? <laughs> Okay, she said she wasn't getting much sleep, but since she was. See, I actually get, uh, what I do, see, wh wh wherever I go, I have, because of how my health is, and any time I could be in the hospital, I have earplugs with me. So, um, when I'm in the hospital, I have my earplugs, I put them in, I'm out. Like, seriously, I've been able to sleep through, like, sleep in a hospital, so. That's the one problem I think people have the noise and everything, the constant going in and out of the room. Oh, that drives me fucking nuts. But, um, I'm definitely gonna need to see a doctor about that and talk to my surgeon about that and just let them know everything because they need to know everything. Oh, but I'm doing pretty good. My incision is still my surgeon. About and my head was like, <laughs> you know, we'll see about that. Um, I'm definitely gonna need to see a doctor about that and talk to yeah. my surgeon about that and just let them know everything because they need to know everything yeah but i'm doing pretty good my incision is still really good haven't popped a stitch or anything like that no infection um i'm just not looking forward to the next three months because it's gonna be three months until i feel back to normal but it will take about six weeks so a month and a half to heal everyone is different though um i'm just taking one day at a time one step at a time and I'm just very grateful for Becky and my mom to be helping me during this time because without them, I'd be screwed. <laughs> Let me just say this. Um, okay, I, I'm a firm believer that she has, she's either pre-diabetic or diabetic because those scratches she'd had, you know, these random scratches she'd get from pets, for the time to take it to heal. I mean, look at Foodie Beauty, Chantel. She's saying, I don't have diabetes. I've been tested negative. And then why did it take her... She had the thingy in November, right? And she was, up till recently, she was still getting wound dressings. How is that? See, I heal quickly. That's the thing. I heal quickly. And, uh, so, you know, I've had surgeries. Like, I had a breast reduction, had a gallbladder removal. I, I heal quickly. Always have. And it's like... There could be another underlying condition that may, maybe food, maybe that isn't diabetic, but also causes slow wound healing. I don't know, but it begs the question. You know what I mean? Like, I'm I'm genuinely when it comes to Amber though, I'm worried because she was talking about her liver, and you know, and the thing is, we've all been commenting how yellow she's been looking. That's that's jaundice. That's starting with jaundice, right? When you start going yellow, so it's like. The, what I, what's going on right now is her body is literally crashing on her. And that's why this whole thing happened, the cancer happened, is because the cancer set in, and this I'm saying, this, let's just say it is cancer. Okay, whatever it is, let's just say for a minute it is cancer. Still calls into question, but let's just say it is cancer. Let's take this with a grain of salt here. This cancer, alleged cancer, set in motion all this stuff that it's like a a ship going down you know like the Titanic you know what I mean like it's like you know and it's scary 
and she and it just it made a question like, what the fuck is she eating? I mean, she's literally her obesity has gotten her to this point, and I can't help but think like, what the fuck has she been eating off camera that would make her liver go like that? And she's younger than I am. Like, see, for me, because of my, all my health problems that I have, I'm so anal about my level, you know, my how my how my body functionings are going okay and I'm always you know whenever I go to the doctor she's like well do you want blood work done you know she she doesn't insist on it but I'm like I need blood work every time because I need to check where my levels are at um am I deficient in this and I deficient in that and then that way I've been able to actually improve my health by taking a certain amount so she'll give me like well you have a deficit let's say in a little bit in your iron so if you maybe add this much then you can make up for that deficit deficit and that actually makes a difference so I that's how I monitor my health I know it's kind of anal retent <laughs> anal but it's like it sorry things are falling on my desk it does make a difference but um it's just for me, like, it mind boggles me. It's so sad to see somebody so young and full of life let themselves go like this. It's just sad. And as for her mom and Becky, like, we all knew that <laughs> pretty much right now they're her caretakers. And I'm a fr my fear is, is that she's going to get so used to being taken care of, she's going to get into the groove of it, that Becky is going to become her full-fledged caretaker. She's going to lose the motivation to lose weight because she's going to be going through the emotional, like, free-for-all. I mean, because we all know this girl ain't good with dealing with, like, emotional shit. Like, you know, uh, and my worry is she's going to go back down the rabbit hole of, like, binging and shit like that and she's just gonna gain and gain and gain and gain and gain and and that's my biggest worry and i'm not surprised that it's gonna happen because look at foodie beauty i mean she's been cycling so hard and like literally psychotic i mean she's her behavior is psychotic and childish it's just insane like she's insane like she's been um and i'm not shaming her i'm just saying i'm just that's the only way i can describe it like it's just insane and I'm just afraid for Amber because girl, this girl is, is bigger and she's 500 pounds. She can't afford to gain any more weight because I'm just afraid, bottom line, that this is going to make her immobile. But you know what though? A, part, a lot of me is like, I don't feel sorry for her in a lot of ways because she has made the conscious decision to bring herself to this point and and blame everybody else for it. Blame her life situation. I, I understand there are certain factors in your life that bring, that has certain consequent, you know, reactions and people act differently and react differently. Amber ate, or, ate, ate as a comfort because of that. Um, obviously, and binges and, you know, led to her eating disorder, you know, her eating habits. But it's like, something's got to give. You know, you become an adult, you become conscious of what you're doing. That is the point in time where you need to make a decision and it's not easy for everyone like we all have to get to a certain point where we're just like we need to change but like you would think that that her learn you know her allegedly learning that she had can't ha her allegedly learning that she has alleged cancer would be enough you would think that but i'm just still seeing the same behavior but then now guys we got to keep in mind like is this the um the uh, like a major hormonal change from the you know, hysterectomy. Did she even have a hysterectomy? You know, it's like, because she lies so much, you can't, you, you, I don't know what to believe anymore. But anyways, I'm sorry I'm talking so much. I just, I have a lot to say. I'm a very talkative person. <laughs> so it's been a few hours since I last came on here to talk to you guys. And my lips are like a different color because I had a popsicle helps with some um liquid and some type of eating i am eating better now than i was the last like four days so that's good um i did want to mention that um, just let you know girl you are not gonna starve being on a liquid diet there are people that have to be on f two fucking weeks before weight loss surgery 
You're not going to starve, girl. Like, seriously. You f you'll feel like you're starving maybe a little bit, but, you know, it's what you have to do. Did she actually go through with having that drink that, you know, the one that makes you poop? Like, Satan's coming out of your ass? <laughs> like, seriously? Sorry, it, it feels like that. When you have ga gastroparesis, IBS, and colitis, and you have to take something like that, it feels like Satan's coming out of your ass. Like, seriously? <laughs> Sorry. Um, when they did the surgery, they did see the cancer in my uterus, obviously, but they saw it go into the muscle of my uterus, which mm. isn't good, obviously. Um, and the pathology, I'm not going to get the results for that until next week. And that is going to tell me if it metastasized. I have cancer in my ovaries or my tubes or whatever else they took out of me. It's going to um, help them see that and some other stuff. Like, I don't know. They'll explain it better. So obviously. they're they're going to do the pathology. Okay, this is what I, my understanding. They're going to do the pathology. They're going to check all the, the organs that she has. They're going to do, like, a, a dissection on it and um, trace it and see. And then go back, probably, and see and try to find whether it, it could possibly have metastasized. Because they could probably deduce that maybe it has or has or not. Sorry, my analytical mind. So I just wanted to give you guys that update. And um, it is nerve-wracking. It is scary. The unknown is scary. And the healing process is scary. And my whole head feeling absolutely insane every time I sit up is scary. But I'm trying my hardest to take it one minute at a time. Yes. One moment at a time. Because that's the only way I'm going to get through this. And I'm getting emotional thinking about it, of course. Yeah, oh God. We're going to be in for emotional one, you guys. Like forewarning you because I mean if Foodie Beauty and her in insanity is anything to go by because she's been oh god since the hysterectomy and I warned everybody and some people were just like maybe this will make her better <sighs> I said she's going to cycle hard she's going to go down the binging I mean my god that oh my god like this past month with her has been insane I'm going to do whatever I want, you know, whatever, no accountability, there should be no consequences to my actions. Really? Because it's like, I'm 29 years old. Mm -hmm. I could possibly still have cancer, we don't know. But like, I'm going through menopause at 29, and I know a lot of people who have had this even younger, but it's just like a crazy situation, and I know other people have it worse, I totally get that, but it's just like, in my mind right now, it's just so... Sometimes it's so surreal, and sometimes it's hard to believe. Like, I'm in a nightmare or something. And uh, Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine. I, I mean, I've never been through this. I can't, I mean, I can't imagine what it must be like to have everything taken out, and then all of a sudden, you're just emotionally changed. I mean, my mom said it was brutal for her. Um, it was really hard for her. So, because she, she had it gradually. She didn't have it all out at once. Um but it was hard for her and keep in mind my mom was raising three daughters at the same time you know three of us and dealing dealing with other stuff but i'm just saying you know that's what i'm saying i'm trying to be fair about this because this is a very traumatic thing for a woman to have especially when you have everything scooped out i mean and, and i mean this is it, it, you know it's like it's sad you know it's like but at the same time, it's like, you brought yourself here, but then it's sad that she'll never be able to to even explore the possibility of biologically herself having a child. That must be so fucking devastating for a person who actually wanted to conceive a child. Me, like, I personally for me, I don't care. I mean, I, I, I'm looking at having a hysterectomy by choice because of my all the crap that I'm dealing with, I'm, I'm just thinking that that's going to say, that's pretty much going to be my saving grace because of all the fucked up shit that I'm going on with my female and my, my urinary. Okay. But, um, I'm not bothered about biologically having children. Like if I, if I want to have a child, I can fucking adopt a child. Right. But, um, part of me is like, yeah, I do want to have a child. You know, I mean, it wouldn't be nice to biologically have one. But then I have all these health issues, and it's just like, do I want to, f you know, I don't know if I can go through the pregnancy. That's my issue. I have a horned uterus, and that makes it harder to have kids, and that makes it more difficult. Um, my mom had toxemia three times 
every time that she's had a kid. So, um, like, on my mom's side, every woman has had birth, you know, issues with giving birth and having children. So it's just like, I don't know if I want to put myself through that with all the health issues that I've been dealing with. I just don't know if emotionally I can deal with that. You know what I mean? And I have asked people say, well, you know, you're never going to find a husband. A guy, if they're going to, you know, take away all your lady parts. And it's just like, you know what? Whoever I end up with, well, I'm, I want, you know, they'll understand, you know what I mean? Like, they'll accept it and understand that, you know, the reasons why. Because I know for some guys, they want kids and have no, having a woman that can't have kids is a turnoff for them. But, you know, I'm not going to be with a guy like that. You know what I mean? It's, what's the point? <laughs> but anyways, uh, sorry. 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 I'm so sorry I'm talking too much. Um, it's just like I see this whole life that I want and need and could have. I just feel kind of paralyzed right now. But yeah. I keep reminding myself that this is not forever. That it'll be okay. And every day I'm going to be recovering and getting closer to feeling better. You know? I don't want to be such a Debbie Downer. <laughs> you guys, look at my new blanket. I have to say, you know, here's one thing that I'm going to say is a little bit of a difference between her and Foodie Beauty is that Amber, I don't know. I don't know. See, I see. With, with Foodie Beauty and Pete's, I don't think Pete's cares as much as Foodie Beauty thinks he does. And the same went with BB. Like, I don't think he gave a lot, you know, he was there for her or whatever, but I don't think he was that emotionally involved. And see, I think with Amber, she has people who are emotionally involved with her, whether it be a lover or a mother or a friend. I think that's going to be the defining factor for her and maybe she'll get through it easier. I'm hoping that will be enough for her, but yeah. Isn't that so cute? What? what is it? gray. That's kind of like the color scheme I'm going for. I'm actually that's currently great. in the guest bedroom because that's where we're all sleeping right now. <laughs> um, guest bed. Like, yeah, did they get a house? Did you get a house or did you get like a townhome or something? To sleep because our new bed is going to be going into the master bedroom. Obviously. I mean, here's the thing. There, when I saw a little bit from where I saw the kitchen, it looked almost like literally exactly the same as my sister's kitchen, like cabinets, and um. They live in a townhome, so... You know, because maybe there are some people who, like, own different, like, condom... You know, con you know... S s apartment and townhomes, and, you know, they own some in different states. And I'm thinking maybe she's in the same place that my sisters are in, but in a different state. You know what I mean? Like, because it just looks very similar. But maybe not as... Because I don't know. My sisters have a very nice place. Which is where... Because they remodeled it and they moved into a newer place because they lived in an older version of the of the of the townhome, and then they gave them they allowed them to move into a newer one. So obviously we do. Um, so we wanted to have that all cleared out and stuff. But yeah, this is just like the guest bedroom area type spot. Um, <clears throat> oh, and I look like an actual grandma. I'm wearing this huge nightgown. It's way too big for me. I uh, ordered I think like four. Four or five from womanwithin.com, I think. I don't know. Oh, my God. Because I knew That's I needed funny. to wear something loose after surgery for a while. And that was the only place I that could go. place is so expensive, though. I, I mean, I rarely buy from there. Like, seriously. But I, I, I wouldn't... I don't disbelieve, though, that it would be too big for her. Because their sizes go really big. Like, seriously. If she were to find something... Like, as I'm saying... That's one place that she should look at, like, getting bras and stuff, because they have, like, they have shoes, too, like, seriously, they, that she could get boots and stuff that she could get that would actually fit her, you know? But, not boots, because I actually know, um, no, no, because of her lymphedema and whatever. I'm saying, like, at least sneakers and stuff, you know, good sandals, good, you know, flats or whatever, but, you know, supportive shoes. What am I talking about? I'm tired. I really think of finding something that was like loose and girl. Did I succeed in that? These are huge on me. Um, what size walking, did you I get? With them a little bit so I don't like trip. So I almost forgot to end the video, but I just wanted to end it. I wanted to. I have to say, she kind of looks smaller ish. <laughs> she kind of like. <laughs> 
wow, like, she must have lost some weight because her head looks small. <laughs> Just give you guys a little update. And if I do bombard you guys with the several content while I'm healing, I do apologize, but just what I'm going through. And thank you guys so much for the positivity and all the get well wishes. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Okay, so, um, I have very mixed feelings about what's going on with her. Part of me is like, I'm just trying to go with it, take it with a grain of salt, pretty much all of me. But then if there's a small part of me that's like, she could be lying, she could this and that, you know. I don't know. I don't know anymore with her. And it's sad because she could be telling the truth, you guys. I mean, genuinely telling the truth this time. And which makes me feel like, part of me feels like an asshole, you know. But it's like, I'm not the kind of person that's just going to keep on sticking my hand in the fire and getting burned. I'm not a misogynist, so I just have to emotionally keep my distance when it comes to her and just take things with a grain of salt. My main, and I'm going to say, I've, I'll say this and I'll say this again. My main reason for doing these kind of video, videos is because I want to shed light on the fact that these p girls, because most of the people that I react to with regards to like locales and stuff like that, you know, in the weight, weight loss, like weight gain community is Amber Lynn Reed and Chantel. And these two girls seem to normalize obesity. They don't, they, they, um, it's almost as if they glorify it basically. And they glorify their lives. They put it on, you know, they put it on, you know, basically live for everyone to see and they don't want the backlash from that. But they don't understand that not everybody is going to agree with their lifestyle. Especially, I mean, can you, you gotta understand. These, you know, I understand that this lifestyle is not normal. It's not healthy. And people are going to have shit to say about it. And it's just the way it is. And Chantal, like, I'm going to say that. I was going to do a separate video about her. Because, like, kind of like an update video. Because, Jesus Christ, this girl is cycling hard. And... The re and people have been several people have asked me like why aren't you doing more foodie beauty videos, and this is my I'm addressing it now. So the reason why is because she's so ch I mean she literally changes so much so quickly I can't keep up, and so um, that's why I refrain because it's just like you know one minute I have this formed opinion and next minute she does something else and it's like completely changes my like my you know my whole entire mindset like I. There have been a couple times where I was going to do a reaction video and, you know, do a video and I have it all filmed and ready to go out. And then literally in the same day she changes and like my video that I had just made is no, you know, even if I'm reacting or just doing like a, a talk video, um, it's totally ir irrelevant. <laughs> so... I'm just like, I can't do this, like, but as it stands right now, um, and somebody else, somebody said this in the comments, and I can't help but agree, help but agree with it, she, I, at this point, I have no faith in Chantel right now, um, I have optimism, I, I, you know, I hope that she, that this is, you know, that this new dot, you know, this is gonna stick for her, or that she's gonna stay on a good plan, but this, I, but I really think she's just circling the drain, and she's going to keep on cycling and cycling and cycling because she has no healthy coping mechanisms. She's not getting help for herself. She's constantly blaming everybody else, you know, blaming her audience, using YouTube as a diary, as a co you know, and stuff like that. And, and, and expecting there not to be any consequences to her actions. And, you know, if you really watch her and listen to what she has to say, really take in her mannerisms when she says, you know, especially when she's really hyper, it's like kind of interesting. She'd say, Hey, I'm here and you're going to get it, you know? And it's just like, then times when she's really manic, she's like, you know, I'm going to do this, you know, and I want my cake and I'm going to, she's literally said in a video, I want my cake and I'm going to eat it too. And you know, that's just the way it is, you know, and you're going to deal with it. It's like, she's punishing us somehow, you know, she's punishing us by making a video and also punishing herself. It is so 
incredibly fucked up. And I don't have as much time to devote to YouTube, so that's why I'm talking about it here. But, honest to God, I am sick and tired of being punished as a viewer being... And I'm just speaking personally as a, one viewer. I can't speak for everybody. But I am sick and tired as a viewer of Foodie Booties, as an observer, of being felt like I'm being punished. You know what I mean? Being berated by this psychotic, oh, morbidly obese woman who acts like a fucking child and can't get her shit together. Like, seriously, I'm younger than she is, and I'm hell of a lot more mature than she is. Like, I'm, she's, like, almost in her 40s, and I'm in my early 30s, so it's, like, there's a big, a really big, you know, gap, you know, difference there. So it's just, like, it's really fucked up. You know, I have people in my life that close to me in my life that are older than me, but sometimes they don't act as mature, you know, even though they claim they are. It's just like, it's just so fucked up. But when it comes to foodie booty, it's just like, that's how I feel right now. That's why I'm not reacting as much and doing very much content on her because I just feel like, you know, with the way she is and the temper tantrum that she throws, it's just like, she's a petulant child and the way I've been taught is you have you know ignore their behavior don't acknowledge it you know and if I feel like you know if you don't acknowledge your behavior you know you turn away from it and you know they're gonna see that they, you know we're not interested and we're not gonna sit here and deal with it that's what basically what I'm doing is I'm not gonna sit here I mean I'm gonna I'll talk about her off and on but I'm not going to make video upon video upon video because I feel like when Foodie Beauty's case it's only going to fuel her even more and it's it's different for Amber and um it's really hard to explain with Amber See, Amber's not the same you know what I mean like but she is the same in some ways but not in other ways and see that's why with Foodie Beauty it's like you have to ignore her you know don't give her the attention that she just so desperately craves. I mean, she's more, like, pathetic in that way, you know, and more transparent in that way and very much more vocal in that way. And she constantly bemoans, you know, reaction channels and being treated a certain way and oh, how she's not going to let it get to her, and yet she does. Like, she's so bothered by it. It's just, it's driving her crazy. And I just, I can't, you know. Like, it's just too much. I mean, Amber's slower paced, and that's why it's, I guess, for me, it's easier to react to her and do more videos on her. But for Food and Beauty, it's like, it's so fast paced. I just can't keep up. I don't, I don't have enough time, energy, and just the wanting to, de you know, to really de devote to Food and Beauty. There are plenty of people on this platform that do so, and that's fine. I'm not like, I'm not judging or anything. I'm just saying, I just don't personally for me I just I can't um but I I mean I will check in occasionally and talk about her like I'm talking about her now but I just wanted to explain that for people who are confused because you know I do I and wonder why but um I just like I said I have no hope for her right now um even though she seems to be eating healthy you know and she was exercising I was like you know yeah but you're gonna come back like two or three days later and you're gonna, I can't do this, or whatever, and it's, you know, I'm getting criticized for eating good, it's not fair, yeah, 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 I'm getting all this hate, you know, so why not just eat, you know, bad food, whatever, and have a throw a temper tantrum, it's like a child, and I don't want to acknowledge this child, just beha childish behavior, she's, doesn't deserve my attention, <laughs> I know it sounds kind of condescending, but it's just like, when you act like a ch when she uh, she's acting like a child and I I'm treating her like a child, and sometimes that's 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 how I was raised I guess I don't know if that's like the correct thing to do but sometimes you gotta ignore them and be like you know what I'm not gonna pay attention and acknowledge your childish behavior because you're just doing it for attention you know what I'm saying and it's like it's a sad thing you know a grown ass woman literally acting like that like you can't but wonder like 
She has no... She, I mean, the, the, this is Foodie Beauty in a nutshell. She has a channel that is literally... Where, and she's a food... She has a food addiction, binge eating disorder, okay, according to her, who has a channel and her income, her life is dedicated to food. Where she comes on camera and eats food. And talks about weight loss. But she has gained weight. But she's convinced that making YouTube videos, doing mukbangs, and crap like that is good for her. I don't think YouTube is good for her. Foodie Beauty does not have the mentality and the capability to withstand YouTube and the shit that comes with it. It's not easy. It's not being easy being on a platform like this. It's because there are just some people out there that are just really cruel and it can be, um, it can be mind, you know, mind fuck, it can mind fuck you. And Betsy, she can't handle that in the slightest. And Amber's the, the same way, but she's more like, she hides it. But with Chantel, it's like, she goes off on every little thing. And it's just like, Chantel, you need to get over it. That's the, the you need to get over it. You're not, you're not special. You're not set apart from anybody. You're not the only one with problems, you know, and and this is something I've wanted to say, but I've refrained. There is nothing beautiful about your bites. When you go shh, I said shh, it's not cute. It's not quirky. It's, it's fucking disturbing. And I'm not saying this to, uh, to fat shame or anything. I'm saying this because this behavior, Chantel, if you watch my videos, is fucking disturbing. And, um... In some ways, it's more disturbing than Amber's behavior because it's such so much more transparent, whereas Amber really goes more behind the scenes, basically. And it's, like, so fucking scary. It's, like, I almost want to, like, contact somebody and, like, have Chantel sectioned or something because that woman is not, you know, she is not right in the head enough to to take care of herself. She needs to be inpatient where she has no control over what she eats or what she does. She, she needs somebody to take control of her life. But I'm not going to be, I, you know, I'm not that person. I'm not going to literally follow through and actually go that far. But, you know, it's, it's a temptation, right? But, I, you know, but that's just me. Um, I don't, I'm just talking out of my ass, you know. In these videos, I just give an opinion I could be totally off base with what I'm saying, but I just go off logic and my own experience and observations. So, um, just take what I say with a grain of salt. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it's just, it's been a, you know, I'm sorry. I, I've been talking a lot today. This has been a lot of like drama in my life lately. And it's like, uh, I just, I'm in that headspace where I could just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk because I've been doing so much of it. It's just like, I honestly feel like I've just been everybody's psychologist as of late. You know what I mean? Like people are just like, why aren't you in psychology? I'm just like, I just don't want to be a psychologist. Even though people think I, I'm made to be, you know, I'm born to be a psychologist. But I just don't want it. You know what I mean? It's like, maybe it's a, the, it's the irony. Like the one thing that I'm good at is something I don't want to do. <laughs> But, um, but, um, it's just, that's how, basically how I feel right now about that. And I'm just, I want people to know that I don't eat, sleep, and breathe this stuff. Like, when I'm, I get off can't you know, off here, I do some little bit of editing, I post it, and then I'm done. I don't think about it at all. I have other things going on in my life that take up my time. I focus, I'm focusing more on myself. People think, you know, have this idea that because I'm making these videos and so many of them that I don't have a life, that this is all I, all I do. I eat, sleep, and breathe this. I need to understand that this isn't my whole entire life, you guys. Okay. I can make videos and still focus on myself. Like there's no, like, I don't have to choose between the two. And I kind of, it's just kind of irritates me when people keep on telling me that. Just focus on yourself. Look at yourself. Like, bitch, I am focusing on myself. Like, I can multitask. Like, <laughs> it's, I'm sorry, it's fucking annoying. Because it's like, here's the thing. We're all entitled to our opinions. 
you know, this is a public platform. I'm entitled to come on here and make the content that I want to make within reason. And I'm just sick and tired. And I know I'm just tired of people telling me that I shouldn't. I'm tired of people telling me that, you know, this and that. I mean, I get your concerns and I appreciate it, but it's just like, I'm going to come on here and do it regard, you know, I, this is what I want to do right now. And there may come a point in time where I'm no longer want to do this, you know, and I'm just going to stop, you know, but at this moment in time, I'm okay with doing this. Um, the only, the only way I wouldn't continue to do at least reaction videos like on Amber and Chantel is if they came to me personally and asked me like not to, like I said, this is bothering me. What you're saying is bothering me. I would just be like, okay, you know, I was, I would, you know, I wouldn't, I, out of, you know, humil, I guess, being a good person. But as of right now, I, I just, I'm okay with doing these videos. I'm okay with making videos on YouTube and doing the content I want to make. And yeah, eventually I do want to make more of my own, you know, like showing my own personal stuff content, but it's like, I'm in a place right now where I can't, well, I'm just limited to what I can do. Okay. And that's why I'm not doing as much uh, in the way of personal vlogs because, you know, um, my vlogs will get boring pretty quick if I just, you know, because I can't go out and like film at different places. I mean, it's just, you have to understand, like I'm partially immobile, so I'm limited. So that's just the way it is. And I'm getting to, I'm getting there. I'm getting to trying to become more mobile, healthier, and it's just a process. So there you go. And by the way, doing these videos is my own content. I'm adding commentary. I'm editing and stuff like that. Taking the time. This is my content. Yeah. I'm, f I'm making content on another person, but I'm putting time and effort into this. So for those who say, well, this isn't your own content. Yeah, it is. So shut the fuck up. Like, seriously. Like, oh my god. Anyways, I, I've talked enough. Um, hope you guys are okay, happy, healthy, and safe. Like, it's getting crazy out there, you guys. Like, the numbers are going back up with coronavirus. Um, they're talking about closing things down again. Like, I'm kind of now kind of turning on my gut. I don't know. Just things in my state are kind of going crazy a little bit. I don't know what's going on with my governor. Like, he's, I don't know. I don't know what the hell he's doing. Like, did Trump get to him or something like that? I don't know. Like, ugh, it's just crazy. But, um, as of, like, the 21st of this month, um, masks for Kroger's and, like, Walmart especially, masks are going to be mandatory. I know you guys have a thing about me talking about masks and coronavirus stuff, but you know how I feel, but it's, like, I've been researching on masks that are made for people who have asthma and stuff who have problems breathing. And I heard that they actually are working on stuff for people like that. Masks for people like that. Um, it's just going to take time. You know what I mean? Like, but just do your research. It is they people are taking this into account. And because my mom has breathing problems and not easy for her, but she does it because, you know, she's not an idiot and she is not being foolish and an asshole for, and not wearing it because, oh, it's my right, you know. I'm sorry, I, I just don't agree with that narrative, okay? I I just don't. And I'm free and allowed to speak my opinion about it. And I'm not a slave master. I'm not infringing on anybody's rights and telling people that they don't have rights but we are in a pandemic and we need to keep ourselves safe and it wearing a mask does help it's been proven so i don't know what the f you need to get that fucking psychotic that shit out of your head well about oh i just it makes me mad i'm sorry i just when you have family members that are in a high risk area when you have friends that work at a hospital that you worry about when you have people that have, I have a friend that's husband that had it and is now recovered. Okay. The, what she had to deal with, it goes close to home to you. You know what I mean? And so when I hear people talking about, oh, right to wear mask, bitch, 
I like to see you com say that when you get it or when a family member gets it. And you think, gee, I could have prevented that. Maybe I should have worn a mask. Don't be stupid. Like, fuck. I'm so sick. And I'm sorry. I, I'm sick and tired of hearing about it. I'm literally sick and tired of hearing about it. I, you know, I understand about the health issues and stuff. But it's like... There's, you know... There's... There, there were, um, there's got to be a way. There's, you know, we have to do it or, or else this thing is going to stick around forever and we're never going to get back to normal. And that's what the whole motivation behind is that if we wear a mask and reduce, you know, contact, this thing could go away faster. But because of idiots, like, who were like, oh, it's, it's human rights and you're taking away my, my right, you know, American rights. So fucking stupid. I'm, I'm so sick of it. Like, there are, the UK is even going... There are places in, in the world that numbers have reduced because they've been wearing masks. And they're going back to normal. And we're still... We're going back up. It's like... Hello? Like, seriously? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I just had... I had a big discussion with my family today. And it's just been on my mind. And plus I had a really another bad interaction in the store. And it's just like... Seeing people go crazy. I mean... I had this woman, like, literally... And it happened, like, a similar thing happened to a friend of mine where, where they witnessed somebody, like, this woman, like, th this woman basically, when I was in the store, had this hand sanitizer, but it was, like, in a pump, whatever, and she literally smeared it on this woman's face. Like, I'm telling you, it's getting insane out there, you guys, like, because this woman was refusing to wear a mask and this other woman was, like, really tired of it, like, um, and she was upset because Kroger's wasn't, like, enforcing it, and now they're forcing them to do this, so, and other stores are, are following suit. So I'm glad because I'm telling you, it's just like, it's not worth the risk, you guys. Being stubborn and, and whatever, it's not worth the risk. Because, you know, you could possibly spread to somebody else. And it's like, dude, you could kill that person. Like, you know what I mean? Like, even though you're asymptomatic, you could spread to somebody else and they could actually become symptomatic. So it's just like, you need to think about that. You know, think long and hard. God. Anyways, I'm talking too much. Like, holy fuck. Uh, fuck. Like what Amber says. Raw as fuck. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I had a lot to talk to t today. I had, a lot, I had uh, plenty to drink today. I get talkative when I'm drunk, so. I'm not drunk drunk. I'm just kind of like lit, but whatever. Alright. Like, share, subscribe, comment below, hit the notification bell. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, you know what to do, right? Comment below, hit the, hit the any of my social media accounts. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If I don't see you on other social media accounts, sometimes I don't really, like, check my messages and shit, and I'm sorry. Like, I... I I'm so bad at that. So I, if you try to, like, hit me up on social media and I don't respond right away, right away don't think I'm not going to. It's just going to take me time. Because sometimes I'm just, like... I, I'm on there and I'm off. I just don't really pay, spend much time on there. But anyways. I'm trying to, like, distance, like, from social media as of late just because all the craziness going on. Like, but... Anywho... See you later, guys, and peace out, my sassy assassin. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Mm -mm. Fuck this shit, I'm out. No thanks. Don't mind me. I'ma just grab my stuff and leave. Excuse me, please. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Nope. Fuck this shit, I'm out. All right then. I don't know what the fuck just happened, but I don't really care. I'ma get the fuck up out of here. Fuck this shit, I'm out.